Total, I've been president for nine years. This is my ninth year. Um, well, I've been on the committee 29 years. Um, before that, I used to come to working bees with my late father, who was also on the committee before me, and he was a former president as well. Oh, I'd like to think so. I'd like to think all the work we've done isn't just for tomorrow, so um, I would expect we'd be going in 40 years. I won't be, but the club certainly will be. Well, just about everything. The building behind me um, is only 22 years old, so I was here for that. Prior to that, we had tin sheds roughly where I'm standing. Um, and this building here, the big building behind us, was, is only about 14 years old. So really the only thing, other than the stools behind you, uh, is the grandstand. Everything else is basically new in the 30, last 30 years. So I can't imagine that all changing again in the next 30 or 40. Some of these things will still be standing. Well, we I haven't got a great deal of memory on the actual race day because we're normally so busy that not a lot, we don't enjoy the day like a punter, like it's busy, but functions in Melbourne that we go to, awards, nights and all those sort of things, they are a good letdown for our committee and all the hard working volunteers that come. Um, just, I'm, my biggest joy is watching the buses come through the bus car park. I think that every time I see a bus go down the road, there's another 50 or 60 people and they come in like cars, so it's marvellous. It makes all the work that we do worthwhile. Well, that's a very good question. I think just the atmosphere, we're out in the bush, we're not near town and surrounded by gum trees, the mountains in the background. It's just appealing for a, just a day away from the hectic life of Ballarat for most people and, and the cities and the towns and just relaxing atmosphere. Oh, there's, there's many people like that, yes. They've been coming, for, especially in the camping, we've had people coming here year after year and they won't miss a meeting now. Once they've been here, it's sort of like a magnet. They just keep coming back. It's a way of life for them up here on, the, on these big weekends, so they just look forward to it months and months in advance. They ring me up and say, oh, I can't wait. So, uh, I don't know exactly what it is. We just must have that magic touch. I'm not sure what it is. Now I've been here since, as track manager since 2000. I took over from Arthur Kelly, who passed away in 2000, and I've been doing it ever since. I did a little bit with, helped him a little bit before he passed away, but ever since 2000, I've been track manager. I got involved with the turf club when Alan Pitcher was president, and uh, I reckon we put the water in in about 92, around about early 90s. Uh, vigilant about getting the track right than what you used to have to be years ago, because there's a lot more money involved in racing now than what there used to be then. Probably a little bit, because now they've got more machinery to do things that we, years ago, they never, never had. See, the industry's got more stuff. And, well, we get our stuff from Ballarat. Yeah, well, that's right, we've got to keep the track um, watered all over the summer and because if we don't it'll just die off and it won't it takes too long to get it back so it's just a matter of putting the water on and keeping it sort of in good nick well years ago like I get back to Alan Pitcher and Bill Thompson they pushed to get a watering system in and after a lot of pushing it actually happened and uh, well Neil was my cousin but that had nothing to do with it about that but uh, he had the old mine over there and they um, put down a bore alongside the old mine in, into the big room underneath and that's when they got the water here and put the irrigation on um, that would have been about to my knowledge I think about 92 1992 that went on and um, it made a lot of difference to the track marvellous to have water because before that before the races they used to just get the water out of the river in a tanker drive around sprinkle it on and i think they hardened the track more than what they softened it but uh yeah and uh, and the irrigation system it's been a great advantage to the club we probably were the first in one or two things got in with the wineries and that made a bit of difference and of course it's the atmosphere too like I live here all the time, come out, look at the Pyrenees, think nothing of it. 
But everybody that comes, oh, what a beautiful view you got of the Pyrenees. Well, because you lived there all my life, you don't think of it. So, yeah, I think that's got a lot to do with it. And, and we got a nice, we have a nice crowd all the time. And it's a sort of family day too. I've been involved in the club for 60 years. I joined in 1957, president four years, uh, CEO for 12 and was on the committee for about 20. And I'm still a, I'm a life member and still involved in working with the club. Well, uh, my father was on the, uh, the committee years ago and at 17 he took me to a race meeting and not being many there I ended up on the committee. No, not really, but I, I was impressed by the enthusiasm by those old people and the passion that they had for the club and uh, yeah, that encouraged me to join. Uh, I had an uncle, uh, Keith Asprey, who was uh, secretary on and off for 31 years, like uh, the war interrupted that and probably he was the man that saved the race club and uh, it was his uh, his ability and his dedication that rubbed off on me and uh, yeah I followed in his footsteps took a lot of his advice oh well we battled um, we battled to stay uh, for uh, stop closure um, you know there's certain standards that the racing in industry set and uh, we were struggling to get crowds here to make us financially strong enough to remain viable so he made a big decision to um, introduce uh, wine and food and music to the race course uh, to attract the non-race non goer uh, and uh, we got the interest of uh, local wineries on board, Mount Avoca and Blue Pyrenees and that grew and uh, it took five or six years but once it took off it really took off. There's, you know you can have very good infrastructure but uh, people don't look at fences and buildings they've got to be entertained and uh, a lot of them had come they enjoy the wine and the food and the music and they look over their shoulder and say, my goodness, there they go. And they're the horses, you see. So uh, the horses are an attraction, but you've got to mix it in. And one of it, that's been one of our greatest successes is to introduce that off-course off entertainment. In my time, we completed the outside running rail, uh, introduced water onto the track. It put a watering irrigating, irrigating system, which made the track safe. Uh, we completed a new members building which is just over here to our left and the one that topped it all off was the um, present function centre that's behind us here today where it started off as an undercover bookmakers ring and gradually grew and with uh, the industry, the local Pyrenees Shire and the race club in a combined effort we built that uh, function centre. Uh, I uh, oversaw and managed that construction which I was very proud of and I believe that infrastructure has, has consolidated our future really. It would be fairly impossible now where a brave person had come in and said well, perhaps we're going to take racing away from Avoca. My favourite race day memory was, uh, oh there's been several, but just to stand uh, up on the, uh, in the judges box and look down on the course with the horses going around and seeing people from one end of the course to the other and uh, the amount of tourist buses, caravans, camping, all that sort of thing. That's really been, uh, you know, makes me really happy and makes the club strong with a new, with you know, a viable future, I believe. Uh, I've been on the committee for about the last seven years, but uh, from a family perspective, we've been involved in the committee for many, many years in one way, shape or form. My father was uh, always involved in horse racing, more so harness racing, um, and we only live uh, a few blocks away. Um, and my father was involved in actually providing water and determining the water source for the, the race club back in the early 1990s when we had a few dry years and there was, a, I guess, a bit of a concern about the viability and the track condition and as a result worked with the committee uh, to determine the best place to obtain bore water which uh, subsequently today on the track we've got a beautiful track um, and that's partly because of or mostly because of the the bore water situation that we've just got that supply there when we need it. I think uh, a few of the committee members ensured that I was a, a member and I was approached years ago and I actually see it as part of uh, I guess my community input to be involved in the club and, and it's a great club to be part of. I look at it as far as the economical uh, 
uh, input to the community, not just the VOCA but the broader area. You look at it, what does the race, the race meet today look like? It's part of uh, the wineries that are involved and uh, it's part of the, uh, the economical input that we get as far as the accommodation providers that uh, are all booked out on weekends like this weekend. It's got that flavour about it, it's special um, and people come along to enjoy not just the races, the horses, but it's a, it's a time when people can get together. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good time. It's the volunteer component of the Avoca Shire Turf Club is, is really there because I think of the leadership from the CEO and the President. And not just that, but those senior members and those past and current members of the committee. The advice that they provide and basically how everyone on the committee gets along. Uh, the working bees that we have and looking to that end goal. We understand that it's an important, important event for the region. It's an important event for us and the local community. It's where people come together and all chipping in and being part of that the management that occurs on the day, all those things that come together to make it a great day. I look at it as far as the economical uh, uh, input to the community, not just the VOCA but the broader area. You look at it, what does the race, the race meet today look like? It's part of uh, the wineries that are involved and uh, it's part of the, uh, the economical input that we get as far as the accommodation providers that uh, are all booked out on weekends like this weekend. Everyone on the committee gets along. Uh, the working bees that we have and looking to that end goal. We understand that it's an important, important event for the region. It's an important event for us and the local community. It's where people come together and all chipping in and being part of that the management that occurs on the day, all those things that come together to make it a great day. When we look at the generations and the families that are involved, it's certainly been an important part of the Vokashire Turf Club. When we look at the past generations and families that are there, it's proved to be important in the past and it is important in the future as well. It's key to how this club operates but not just the family, but also looking outside that and other members of the community that can be involved, whether as volunteers on the day or part of the committee. So it's great to see people come from Ballarat, Bendigo, Geelong, Melbourne, and the rural parts of the state to come here and, and enjoy a great day at the Evoca races. Been here for, this is my seventh cup call this year. Um, started when I was 14. Um, and been coming every year since, haven't missed one. Yeah, so Jack Styron was a huge mentor of mine. I followed Jack around the country circuit. I think Jack called 20 odd Avoca Cups. So I followed Jack around the country circuit for the best part of a couple of years. Uh, and when Jack gave it away, he was a very unique mentor to have and a uh, person to learn off. But when Jack gave it away, thankfully um, the club passed it on to me. So I still see Jack most Saturdays and uh, he's going well. And uh, hopefully I'm uh, doing him proud. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, this is my seventh year um, and I couldn't see myself. I'd love to keep coming back for as long as I can. Um, you look at a lot of country race books and Jay Styre in OAM is a life member or honorary member at a lot of them. So he was a great servant of country racing. I love country racing. I'm a country boy, even though I live in the city now. Um, I get the best view in the house today to this. It's a great show they put on and uh, seven, eight thousand people here, why be anywhere else? I think Avoca is probably in the right spot. Um, it's got a lot of wineries, it's not too far from Bendigo, it's not too far from Melbourne. They put people on in the infield, it's a comfortable day, um, and they just do it so well. There's so much here, there's so much food, there's so much entertainment, there's so much fashion, um, and they've got a terrific racetrack which always draws horses. So I just think they've got the best of everything. Um, probably uh, worked here since I was young, and then um Father probably said to me, come to a committee meeting, the same as what he did, and, yeah, and got on the committee. Been on the committee for 20 years. Yeah, I've had a lot of success here. Like, it's grown, it holds its numbers. Yeah, everything's all good, so that's, yeah, that's why you stay. Probably uh, financial success, and, and probably the crowd's probably got a lot to do with it. If you can keep getting a crowd, you're pretty successful, where a lot of clubs don't, don't get the numbers. Probably the location's got a bit to do with it, with Bendigo and Ballarat so close. But, um, yeah, just a good day, and everyone seems to have a good day, and they just keep coming back. 
The camping's probably made a bit of a difference too. It's sort of, um, it's growing and it, once they come and camp on site, they just seem to keep coming back and talk to their friends and yeah, that's probably, yeah, keeps it going. Uh, I started on the committee in 1956 and I've been a life member. I've been past president a couple of, I've been present a couple of times and uh, I'm still on the committee. They won't let me get off it. When my father came down, he was president at the time and uh, a lot of the committee and they brought their sons along and uh, we set, virtually set up for the race days. It's good to see that uh, the involvement is still there because uh, uh, going back into the history of the club after the First World War, I, uh, my uh, grandfather was president up probably till 1921 or a bit after. And then uh, after the club set up again, after the war in 1948, my father was the second president and uh, he did a fair, fairly long stint. And uh, uh, then I, I had a brother, that, uh, Peter, he was uh, president for a long time. And uh, we just kept, was always been in the club. Well, the, the favourite memory is uh, <coughs> and, uh, probably the improvements on the track because uh, we used to race on a fairly hard track that, uh, with, with uh, no camber on it and uh, horses could run off on the side and the, uh, it grew onion weed instead of grass and uh, we had no facilities to water. We, we put water on the track and uh, got an outside running rail and uh, we could build a race meeting from there. Um, I don't think it was expected of us, I just think that it was a choice. Like we love coming out here, we love being involved, everything like that. Like it's a great day for everyone. I just think it's a little bit unique, like the location, we've got the Pyrenees behind us. Like everyone who comes out here, you meet a variety of people. It's a bit more of a family community, like everyone knows everyone who's here. I just think it's a great day for everyone to come to. Everyone's willing to pitch in in this community, like everyone wants to make the town better and make the club better. So I just think that like having people who are willing to do things like that and they're willing to participate in everything that goes on in this community as well. So we want to follow in everyone's footsteps. We want this community to continue. I want the race club to be successful and to continue for hundreds of years to come. So I think, yeah. Having role models like my pa and my dad, it's, it's great. You just seem to grow on you. Being involved in a race club is uh, something that all kids, whose fathers were involved, seem to get into. We got onto race horses, we owned and trained race horses ourselves. All were involved in some um, way, either volunteers or committee persons. It's been a, um, yeah, a, <coughs> a true, a, a, trip of passion I suppose for want of better words, it, it's something that you just did and you grew to love it and I think you'd ask any committee man now how, why they're involved and it's just for that passion of the racing industry and the local community I think. Provoking locally it seems to be just the fact that people that can come out here be involved in a race club and see the, and get the joy and the uh, passion out of it that being part of something that's growing and making it better for the community. As a 26 year old Peter became the president in 1967, he continued on for many years, 11 or 12 years after that, and uh, he, he did everything. He wasn't just the face of the club on race days or the a chairman at a, at a committee meeting. Peter was the clerk of the course. He went, went out of his way to make sure everything worked, doing infrastructure work, land earthworks, reforming the track, all that sort of stuff, running rail, all that. Peter basically did most of that behind the scenes off his own bat. And again a young gentleman too was Richard Everton came on and Richard picked up from where CK had taken it to. He uh, was able to capitalise on the food and wine, he built the club up. Richard was the first one to start putting up marquees and all the rest of it and I can remember there was probably 20 marquees now, I don't know how many but you can see the, how it's multiplied from them days. Yeah. As I, I've said long, lots of times, when I first come back onto the club after a couple of years off when I was away working, um, <coughs> the, it, age, average age of the race committee was about 68, when I left I believe it was about 42. Since then there's been a few more younger ones come on. There's a lot more younger ones helping out behind the bars, friends and uh, when you look at the generation coming there's um, 
Peter, Peter Howells, John Howell, uh, their families are up there working somewhere and their, their names are not in race books or anything. I've got a son and a daughter-in-law working here today in bars and they will become the next generation and the, they'll lead the club into the, the next 20 or 30 years. Oh, well my grandfather, he was, um, he was a secretary for around 30 odd years up until the uh, mid 80s. Uh, he died and um, the year after that we decided, Rice being the oldest grandson, decided to have a bit of a reunion on race day just because they ran a uh, memorial hurdle race for him. So I thought I'd get all the family up and just have a bit of a bit of a get together on his uh, on his race sort of thing. And um, we did that for two or three years. But back then Bruce Field, who was uh, president of the club, he uh, asked me if I was interested in doing a bit of sponsorship and and a little bit of work. So I sort of concentrated more on that. And then I. Uh, was invited to nominate for the committee, which I thought was pretty, pretty um, special. Being my grandfather had been around for so long, I thought well, it was a bit of an honour to step into his, you know, follow his boots, because no one else in the family after sort of around Pop's time had been involved in it. So um, yeah, I just picked up my ball and went and sort of went along like that. And the, the kids have sort of we've got more involved in working around the club to the point I do a bit of sponsorship now because some of it's contra sponsorship. We we do a little bit of world, welding work and fencing work and that with the club and uh, some other race clubs and yeah, it's nice to put a little bit back where we get it from. And uh, the girls, I've got three girls working here today plus my wife, so it's sort of a family affair and they've got their boyfriends so I'm dragging them all on board. As <laughs> we st staff it pretty well as much as we can with, uh, you know, with, with my lot anyway, so a bit of a succession plan hopefully, <laughs> you never know. And, and I was only thinking about this uh, a couple of weeks ago like when we started doing some working bees and most of the majority of the committee that got young family are all girls so we may well finish up with a female female committee which wouldn't be a bad thing. I mean the, the ladies we've got on the committee now are you know, really really good in what they do and it's, um, it's just the way things are moving now and it's good to have them on board with us. I mean over the years I've been sponsoring for a lot of years now and, and um, I've had a lot of people come to me four, five, six, seven, eight weeks after the race, I said, oh, we saw your book, you know, at, at in the race book sort of thing, and uh, we didn't know you did that, and you know, like welding or building sheds or whatever we do, you know, and they said, you know, like, interested in having a price, and that's all because they saw our ad in the race book. So, I mean, by the time you do a sponsorship, you might pick up two or three jobs, well, it's worth doing. Uh, one of the reasons when Pop died, and uh, we had the uh, memorial race for him, just in honour of him and that, and, um, yeah, I, as I said, I started off just wanting to you know, get the family together sort of thing, and, and that was all right. But then when um, a couple of the, one of the fields and the Harrisons that are, you know, big, you know, long time names around the race club, and, and there was no Asprey's in the club at the time then, um, and, and they asked me if I'd be interested in joining the committee and that sort of thing. Well, I took that as a, as a privilege, you know, to step into those sort of footsteps. I thought, well, yeah, why not? Because um, the, the, the club's got a big history of uh, you know, your Howells and Harrisons and Slaters and you know, Asprey's and that. And it's nice to just keep a little bit of tradition going through the club. And, and as I say, now we've got some girls coming through. It's, it's a nice, not, not just all boys going through. There's uh, daughters are coming through, and it's yeah, I think it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of the club. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of hard work goes in by a lot of people, but it's. Uh, it, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to sit back and say, well, that was a fantastic day, and everyone goes away, and, you know, even trainers and that, I, I get pulled up out the back sometimes by trainers, and they say, you know, you guys are a credit to yourselves for you know, the way you run the, the meeting and that sort of stuff, so it's, yeah, uh, it's not only the crowd that come, it's the actual trainers that turn up that appreciate what we do and how we run it, so it's, uh, and I, it's a privilege to be part of that. Stay.